Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and LittleShaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the narcissistic personality's inability to process and move on from things. This is something many people encounter when dealing with narcissists, so I thought we could talk about it on the show today. You've probably noticed that narcissistic people have a hard time moving on from things. While they may exit the situation, they don't ever seem to move on from it. They don't seem to process things or accept them or come to terms with them so they can be at peace. It's more of an escape from things than anything else. For example, years after they had a bad experience at a job or with a relationship, they may continue to talk about it as if it just happened recently. All the emotion about the situation is still there. They will often still say the same things, feel the same ways, have the same conclusions. There may be no growth or expanding of perspective at all. If it involves the narcissist experiencing negative emotions, they simply cannot see or hear anything past that. This is why we always recommend not getting caught in a cycle of explaining yourself to narcissists. It doesn't work. It is extremely difficult to deal with someone who cannot move on from things. It ends with people being harassed and punished and just tortured over things for years. And this can be especially horrible because these can be things that never even happened. It results in endless cyclical arguments that never go anywhere, never get resolved, and never end because this person simply cannot let it go. You end up explaining yourself over and over again just to be asked the same questions or be accused of the same things over and over again. It doesn't get through. It never stops and it won't stop because not only do they need to blame you for things in order to avoid shame for themselves and not only do they want to punish you for supposedly hurting them as you have, they have some other very serious issues in this area. Pathologically narcissistic people are extremely rigid psychologically. They are inflexible and they have a very hard time integrating new data into their understanding of things. On top of suffering from a range of cognitive distortions, they enter into a state of cognitive fusion where thoughts, emotions, and experiences become fused together and then those become fixed in their minds. Their perception of reality and consequently their reactions and their behavior reflect this fused experience rather than the experience of the actual situation or the moment and they reject information that refutes or disproves the fused experience. Not just because they're psychologically rigid, but also because, as we discuss in Narcissists and Cognitive Distortions, their conclusions make sense to them. They might have been in this state of cognitive fusion for decades without ever questioning or even acknowledging it. Cognitive fusion and psychological inflexibility contribute to narcissists talking about the same things or asking the same questions over and over again as if they've never been discussed, even though they have, often multiple times. The inflexibility and subsequent rejection of new information is not just a result of these cognitive issues. They are also an automatic defense reaction because acceptance or consideration of the new information would cause narcissists to experience an unwanted or negative emotional event, such as being wrong. Being wrong might not sound so terrible to you, but to someone living in such a shame-based existence, it's very dangerous. Shame is a core component of the narcissistic personality. It is disproportionately strong and it can be triggered very easily. They spend their lives trying to outrun this shame and things like being wrong can cause a tidal wave of shame that they can't escape. This means there is a lot riding on not being wrong. This can be one of the reasons they tend not to learn from mistakes or failures and a big reason they are so resistant to skill-based therapies which could possibly help them with management of some things. Even for narcissists who can admit they have some problems, the idea that they must do something differently can be tantamount to having done something wrong. This makes it very difficult for narcissistic people to process events, particularly if they involve negative emotions. Because narcissists have such a tendency to automatically perceive things negatively, and because they will try to avoid negative emotional experiences at all costs, there are many things that happen which they are not able to process or accept. They can seem to move on from things quite easily, but that's often because they're not moving on from things. They are moving away from things, towards something, someone, or somewhere else. That's not moving on. It's escaping. We see this very clearly in the use of gaslighting and word salad, as well as projection, blame shifting, shame dumping, and virtually all of their other toxic behaviors. It's all about avoiding 
escaping potentially negative emotional experiences. Narcissistic people cannot process or hold negative emotions. They have to simply vent them out. This may release some of the pressure for them in the moment, but it does not address the emotion in any way. So it just sits there. This is why they still seem angry, upset, or hurt, or bothered by things for so long, even things that happened decades ago. In order to move on from things, you have to be able to process what happened and the emotions that came with it. Then you have to be able to accept it all. Narcissists don't do any of that, and consequently, they do not move on. They move away. It's important to remember, too, this overwhelmingly has to do with things narcissists believe have been done to them. Because they don't bond with other people, the loss of a relationship only seems to matter when they believe the other person did something to them, which is often. The relationship itself, though, is not the focus or the problem. It's what was done wrong to the narcissist. That is what they cannot move on from. This is, ironically, also why they move away so quickly from things they've done to other people. Being told they've done something wrong exposes narcissists, which triggers shame, not remorse. Shame and remorse are not the same thing. It triggers shame and must be avoided. The lack of ability to process negative emotions keeps them stuck in what they believe has been done to them, but it also allows them to move away from the things they've done to other people. This can be very confusing, but it can help to remember that in some ways, time has stopped for this person and will never move on, but in others, time is flying by too fast for them to even catch. When you don't process emotions, this keeps the situation fresh as if it just happened. At the same time, avoiding everything and just moving away from it can make events and experiences seem farther away than they really were. This results in sometimes talking about things from decades ago as if they just happened, but also talking about things as if they happened decades ago when they just happened. Their concept of time in this way can be very vague and seems often to be based on how emotionally impacted they were by something. If it has no emotional meaning for them, it seems to have no meaning at all. Hoovering, which is what it's called when narcissists try to suck people back into relationships, falls under this umbrella as well. Many times people believe hoovering is evidence that the narcissist cares about them. Look, they came back. Look, they're crying. Look, they are promising change. Look, they're apologizing. Look, they gave up that other relationship. Look, they made this big, huge, grandiose gesture. But once again, the narcissist is trying to avoid a negative emotional experience by resecuring the relationship. This is not evidence that they care about somebody. It's evidence that losing control over other people terrifies them because they're dependent on other people to survive. In the end, dealing with a person who cannot move on is extremely difficult. There's no growth, there's no evolution, there's no second chance, there is only endless punishment and judgment. As we discussed in the episode of the show called The Loss is Permanent, there can be no change here. Whatever they think you did is etched in stone and will never wear off. It can't be forgiven. It does not decrease in severity over time. If anything, over time what you supposedly did may become worse, not better. That is, until someone else does something to them and they need you to be there for them again. Then it doesn't go away, but it matters less than their need to feel better. Until it doesn't again, of course. This is your only function in these relationships. You are a tool to help regulate their emotions. That hurts. It really does. But at least you will move on from that hurt eventually. They won't. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype worldwide. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I teach workshops, clinics, and seminars throughout the year. So if you're interested in seeing what we are running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the meditations and more podcasts brought to you by betterhelp.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. May the great spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.